You know, some of the most profound and mysterious events of the 20th century weren't political, they weren't technological, they were deeply spiritual. We're talking about mass visions witnessed by tens of thousands of people at once. So we're going to dive into this because what people saw, well, it defies any easy explanation. So here's the puzzle we're trying to solve. On October 13th, 1917, in a place called Fatima in Portugal, a massive crowd, something like 70,000 people, gathered together in the pouring rain. They were there because they were promised a miracle. And what they reported seeing was just incredible. So what was it? What did they see? I mean, just look at this list. Witnesses describe this spinning, multicolored disc in the sky that looked kind of like the sun, but it obviously wasn't. They said it danced around, then seemed to just plummet towards the earth, giving off so much heat that it instantly dried their soaking wet clothes and all the mud on the ground. But at the very same time, some people felt these weird, cool breezes. So you've got intense heat and cool breezes at the same time. It just doesn't make sense. All right, so here's how we're going to tackle this. First, we'll introduce a pretty radical plasma theory. Then we'll try to decode the apparition itself. After that, we'll explore how something like plasma could even create a detailed image. And finally, we'll look at the new view of miracles this whole perspective might offer. Okay, let's jump right into the big idea here. How can science even begin to approach an event like Fatima? I mean, really? The answer might not be in meteorology or some kind of mass hallucination, but in a completely different state of matter, plasma. This is where independent researcher Jay Alfred comes in. He's proposed something pretty wild called the dark plasma hypothesis. His research suggests that a lot of these so-called supernatural events, including these Marian apparitions, could actually be explained as encounters with a natural but very, very poorly understood plasma-based phenomenon. Okay, so when you hear plasma, you probably think of the sun, right? Blazing hot. But this is the crucial part. We're talking about something called cold plasma. It's not about heat. It's generated by particles colliding. Just think about the northern lights, the aurora, borealis, or even the light inside a fluorescent tube. They glow, they produce light, but you could touch them. This idea is absolutely key for everything that comes next. All right, so now that we've got this idea of cold plasma in our back pocket, let's move on. Let's see how this hypothesis starts to build its case by actually looking at historical accounts. We're going to check if what people said they saw lines up with the known properties of plasma. So let's look at another famous case first. This one from Zaytun, Egypt, back in 1968. It was seen by hundreds of thousands of people. On the left, you see their descriptions, a luminous and translucent body and these dove-like shapes of light. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. On the right, look at the properties of plasma. Plasma can generate its own light and it can change its opacity, its transparency. And those doves, Alfred suggests they could just be smaller blobs of plasma in a high energy state called arc mode. Okay, so the parallels with Zaytun are pretty compelling, right? But can we use that same scientific lens to make sense of the even weirder, more complex stuff that happened at Fatima? Let's take a closer look. And this right here, this is the heart of the argument. You see every strange detail from Fatima lined up with a potential plasma explanation. That sudden strong wind on a perfectly calm day, that could be an electric wind caused by the air itself becoming ionized. The dazzling globe of light, well, a high-energy plasma's default shape is an ovoid, an egg shape. The transparent young man, that could be the plasma changing its opacity. And the beams of light from the apparition's hands may be directed plasma discharges. And get this, this wasn't just some quick flash in the sky. The main event, this miracle of the sun, it was a whole performance. It supposedly went on for about 12 minutes, whirling, stopping, and starting up again. That kind of duration makes it really hard to just write it off as some brief weird weather event. So let's be super clear about one thing. Whatever those 70,000 people saw, it was not our sun. I mean, this chart makes it painfully obvious. If the real sun actually plunged towards Earth, it wouldn't just dry your clothes, it would vaporize the entire planet. The object at Fatima gave off a moderate, drying heat and did things our sun just can't do, like spinning, changing colors, and moving around the sky. We absolutely need another explanation. Okay. This brings us to probably the biggest question you're thinking right now. Even if you buy the whole plasma idea, how in the world does a formless ball of energy show up looking like a detailed, recognizable human figure, like the Virgin Mary? 
Yeah, I mean, this is the real head scratcher, isn't it? This is the biggest hurdle. We've talked about weird lights, wind, heat, but now we're talking about a specific, detailed person. How does a dazzling globe of light become a brilliantly shining human figure? Well, the hypothesis actually has an answer for this, and it uses analogies that, well, you'll get it immediately. Think about your plasma TV, with millions of tiny little cells lighting up to create a picture. Or even cooler, think about those futuristic experiments where scientists use lasers to create floating 3D holograms in midair. The theory suggests a natural process that works on a similar principle. So here's the proposed breakdown. And yeah, this is definitely getting into some pretty theoretical territory, but stick with me. First, the theory suggests that the focused belief of all those people projects subtle electromagnetic waves, like a mental blueprint. Second, the plasma entity receives this information. Third, it uses its own structure to build a hologram based on that blueprint, using tiny bits of itself as 3D pixels. And finally, a process called dark ionization makes this invisible energy construct visible for everyone to see. And we're not talking about some blurry, ghost-like figure here. According to Alfred, the projection would be incredibly lifelike. As he puts it, the effect could be so real it would be indistinguishable from real clothes and skin. That would certainly explain the vivid details people reported. So where does all this leave us? If you follow this line of thinking to its conclusion, it really changes how you look at these powerful, historic events. It offers a totally new lens to see them through. Basically, the big idea is this. We might be shifting these events from the supernatural column over to the natural one. In this framework, Marian apparitions aren't a violation of the laws of physics. They're just brief, observable interactions with a natural phenomenon that our science is maybe just starting to get a handle on. So what's the big takeaway here? Why should you care? Well, first, a single theory like this could potentially explain a whole range of mysteries, not just Fatima. It connects the physical effects, the wind, the light, the heat, directly to plasma's known behaviors. And, here's the most radical part, it suggests that human consciousness, our beliefs, might actually play a role in shaping what is seen. And that means we might need to look back at all these ancient accounts, not as fairy tales, but as a hidden data set for modern physics. And this is a really important point that the author makes. The goal here isn't to debunk anyone's faith or say their experience wasn't real. For the people there, it was absolutely real. This is just about offering a different context, a potential physical mechanism that could be behind those powerful, life-changing experiences. And that really leaves us with this one kind of mind-blowing question to chew on. What if all the stories our ancestors told of angels, of gods, of miracles, what if they weren't just stories? What if they were humanity's earliest attempts to describe a complex natural reality, a reality we are only now starting to build the scientific language to even explore? Maybe the past holds a lot more data for the future of physics than we ever imagined.